started? Sure. Thank you, Victoria. Um, <clears throat> so just we wanted to have this meeting today uh, to kind of do a quick wrap up of all of the calls that we've been having. I know that some of us have um, are kind of going back to the office or have been in the office. We've been kind of doing a little bit of everything. Um, some of my staff are still out without power. Uh, I think they're getting it restored. Um, but we just kind of wanted to give some updates after, you know, the whole recovery over the weekend to see what's still happening, what shelters are available, what other resources do we have. So we wanted to do this last call today just to ensure um, if there was any lingering questions over the weekend that we can go ahead and answer those um, questions today. So thank you for joining us and we're apologizing for the technical difficulties that we had over the weekend. Um, we were still kind of having some glitches, but, uh, you know, I'm happy that everybody joined today that was able to join on a short notice. Victoria? Yeah, um, thanks, Dominique. I just want to echo what Dominique said. Thanks to everybody for joining us. I'm sorry for the uh, glitch there with the invitation, but I'm glad to see everybody. And um, I will go ahead and uh, throw it over to Dominique Randall with Pinellas County Human Services. Um, if Dominique, you are available. Yeah, greetings, everyone. Thanks again for joining us today. We've got a lot of busy um, office over here, but um, wanted to just touch base. I didn't realize there was a weekend meeting, so I was one of those who got uh, lost the invite, but I'm glad I'm back on today. Um, so the EOC is still operating a full activation um, I so. um, as we're continuing to respond to issues in the community. Um, so I don't have all of the information that's coming out directly from the EOC, but as we continue to operate shelters, there currently are. Uh, actually three step down shelters in operation one over here at ross norton um, in clearwater there's a little white chapel up in palm harbor both of those shelters are being operated primarily by the american red cross with um, some assistance from the local municipalities counties as well as some of our contracted staff there is some capacity at those shelters of course we're not turning anyone away but ross norton is pretty much at capacity with some um openings up at the Little White Chapel in Palm Harbor. Uh, there also is a brand new step down sh shelter for our special needs population that recently opened at the Coliseum in downtown St. Pete that is primarily supported by the Department of Health. Um, we are continuing to find residents in the community, whether it be through the outreach teams from those local municipalities or through family, friends or family members that are coming forward with residents in need um, that are getting plugged in at those shelters. And uh, right now, we're really just trying to get a good understanding of who all is there to gauge kind of what the needs are and next steps. So we are encouraging everyone to apply for FEMA. The FEMA has, you know, been obviously open and available for all of the Helene response and continues to be um, just also recently open for the Milton response. Um, one of the positives is uh, Jessica always talks about how act these kind of activations have to be turned on or like happen in process and just wanted to comment that the Helene response has been, uh, more things have been ro rolling and coming on board as response to the Helene. So if you were storm impacted or have any residents, community members, yourself, partners, anyone that has been impacted by Helene, many of those resources are now active. So that also includes the TA, which is the, um, the temporary accommodations uh, as it relates to that first storm. Milton is still in process. Those um, are still coming through, but um, FEMA resources are being stretched across the entire country right now, especially on the East Coast here. Uh, they did just open up to at least two DRCs that I'm aware of, um, disaster recovery centers, one being at the Magnolia Room over at the Florida Botanical Gardens, as well as the city of St. Pete with Enoch Davis Center in South St. Pete. So those two are open and operational. Um, you can look at um, PinellasDisasters.org, or excuse me, .gov for more of those informations, uh, more of that information as it rolls out. Um, we're hoping to get some more sites and some more recovery for that. I know there's a lot of social media out there and it changes every day. So I really encourage you to um, stick with some of your main websites that are updating that information and as things are changing and obviously it can be very dynamic from day to day. Uh, schools continue to be closed on Monday. As far as I know, there's not been a determination for Tuesday or next steps yet. Um, there may be some other updates here. There is, I can say about about 250 people in the three shelters that first step down. All the shelters did shut down on um, Friday, all of the emergency evacuation shelters. Um, let me see. 
I think that's the biggest I have. I, I do. I don't know if it was mentioned over the weekend or on Friday, but Pinal's Hope did um, suffer significant damage. Um, a lot of their trees, you know, have been saturated from the past couple of months are kind of uh, ripped up, roots coming up out of the ground. So that property has been deemed un unsafe at this time. It will be a pretty large, extensive recovery effort. So that, sh that shelter has temporarily relocated to a local church parish. Um, and so the state has been able to support that with shower trailers, laundry trailers, porta potties, um, but that church is stepping up and there are some pretty immediate needs to continue operations at that location. Um, I think Victoria was gonna help try and get some information out on that and connect with them to see how ways that we can partner as a community. Um, I know I received a couple calls this morning um, as well from some shelters needing some continued response. I'll also mention the St. Pete boil water notice um, is has ended as of this morning. So St. Pete residents can now drink their water again um, and take showers and all of those good things um, for that. So I'll pause because I know I've been rambling, but um, answer any questions. And I'm sure Victoria has some good updates for us as well. And I'll look through my notes to see if I missed anything. Thanks so much, everybody. Dominique, we had a couple of questions in the chat for you. Um, but before we get to those, I do want to note um, that uh, school has been canceled. Pinellas County schools have been canceled for tomorrow and schools are set to reopen on Wednesday. Um, and then Dominique, we had a question. Do you know if FEMA or the American Red Cross is providing long-term hotel stays or trailer homes? Um, Mr. Calhoun says, I've received calls from hurricane and they're not able to return to their homes. Do you have any updates regarding long-term solutions for those citizens? So no long-term solutions. Sorry about that. So no long-term solutions at this time. Um, like I said, the Helene response, Helene impacted some of that financial assistance for temporary lodging has been released, but none for Milton at this time. So they can go on and apply and also encourage people to apply for both. So uh, if you're imp impacted for Helene and then impacted by Milton again or further impacted, you can apply for both of those separately. Um, I also saw in the chat asking if FEMA would be at the um, step down shelters. As of right now, um, they are not available here. We are encouraging people to go to those DRC disaster recovery centers that are publicly posted. You can also apply online um, and over the phone for um, different abilities. And I also wanted to say PSTA has made all transportation free through, I believe it's through the 28th. So that um, hope, hopefully to open up some of those doors for getting people access to the right services. Thank you, Dominique. Thank you very much. Um, also, uh, since the boil water notice was mentioned, I do want to note that that is still in effect for the city of Gulfport, just so everybody knows the city of Gulfport is still under a boil water notice. Um, and then Dominique, I know that you've uh, addressed this a bit, but um, at the step down shelters, what services um, are being offered there? Can citizens apply for the FEMA assistance there? And so, um, as I was saying earlier, FEMA is not on site at these locations. Um, Red Cross is screening. You can also call into the Red Cross for the same screening and services that they're offering here at the shelter. It does, accessing one doesn't prohibit or um, incentivize access or services for the other, if that makes sense. You don't have to come here to get access to those services. Um, you can do that online as well. But yes, they are Red Cross is on site doing their screenings. I'm hoping the VA, um, post Helene VA came out here and started offering services. So I'm hoping that is available tomorrow or the day after. Um, and as well as any of our homeless service providers, St. Vincent Paul, I think popped out. I've already seen the Rod Street outreach out here at Ross Norton, um, some of those services as well. That is we are, you were on my, sorry, Victoria. You were on my list of call today, Dominique. I assume um, so. <laughs> yes. So we'll come back out to Ross Norton, and then it sounds like the Coliseum, there's no more Lehman Exchange. We would come to the Coliseum instead. Correct. And then um, are there veterans at the Palm Harbor location? There is. Um, there is with some service history, so I, actually, um, I can be your point of contact for that as well. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll reach out to you after, right Thank after you. we hang up here. 
Wonderful. There was also a question um, about food stamp availability. Um, Dominique, do you have any insight on that? Is there somebody at these step down shelters to help folks um, with that enrollment as well? Uh, we have not had any of those contacts come over here. The DRC really is going to be your best bet for that. Think of it kind of like a one-stop shop for all the disaster recovery services. So DCF is going to be there, EBT with their eligibility, um, Hope Florida, you know, and some of those local services as well. Thank you. Find the flyer and put it in the chat too. Thank you very much. Um, and then I know I, that this has been answered um, in a couple of different ways, a couple of different times, but just uh, to reiterate for folks, um, how do folks actually get into or qualify for step-down shelters? We know where they are, but how do you get in? You just show up. So um, the disaster recovery, or excuse me, the shelters are intended for those who were storm impacted. Um, these are not intended to be homeless shelters. Um, but we understand that those shelters are also have their own needs that are um, need to be met right now. So I will, like I said earlier, the Ross Norton shelter is near capacity, um, but we will not be turning people away. But so the white little white chapel does have space as well as the, the Coliseum for those in need. Sorry, I got a little stuck there. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Dominique. I did want to mention something, Victoria. I know we posted, mm -hmm. HLA posted something out um, for donations. So as we've been getting donations coming in, if there's anybody that needs water or, or any other supplies, we've been able to assist some um, providers in the community with that. So as, as we're getting some more donations in, we'll, we'll reach out to some other providers if there's any need for anything else that they're missing. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you, Daisy. Um, yeah, that's that's a really important part. And that's uh, definitely what I wanted to ask next. What do we need, folks, um, providers on the call? What needs do you have that are currently unmet that, uh, you know, HLA or the county or maybe some of the folks on this call can help with? Arrow. Hello, I just got a call from Ready for Life a few minutes ago. They have a group um, that's about a 30 to 100 volunteers that wants to grill out some food and help with like non-permitted type of cleanup type stuff if it needs to be done. Um, so I didn't know if any of the shelters or other services on here could use that to have, have them come out to their area and I can let them know I'm supposed to call them back after this call. That's a great resource. Thank you for sharing, Arrow. Um, before before I talk about how I can connect uh, that group, are there other um, groups here, other providers here on the call that could use that assistance? This is Dominique. I don't know if um, Penelope was on the line, but that is who I would encourage. Um, they could really use all hands on deck out there picking up twigs and branches and, and larger pieces too. But um, I'm sure that they might not have some of those tools, but I would plug in with Joe or Jeff Arrow. Well, there you think. Perfect. Um, yes, that's excellent. Thank you, Arrow, for that. And Jake, I see you on the call from Ready for Life. Thank you as well. Um, that's really, really valuable, really important. Um, Jake, since you are here, I also saw that Ready for Life um, is providing assistance to former foster children who have been impacted by the storms. Do you think you could tell everybody about that a little bit? Yeah, of course. Um, so you know, as a lot of us, you know, here may know, you know, uh, a lot of our, you know, former foster kids, um, young adults, um, oftentimes are already living in, you know, fairly precarious um, situations. So, um, we did see a massive mobilization from our demographic into the shelters, um, you know, those of who uh, evacuated did. Uh, and we're just now trying to kind of get our footing to, to see what we're really up against. Um, you know, we have several hundred young people that we've done, done some outreach to, trying to get them back on our feet. And we're certainly going to be uh, pretty busy over the next couple of weeks uh, guiding people to, you know, start sending in applications to FEMA, um, start helping with uh, some rehousing odds and ends. Um, so it's going to be a pretty tall order for a lot of these these young ad adults who already um, had you know very little. 
Thank you very much, Jake. I appreciate all that you guys at Ready for Life do. Yeah. Um, let's see. We also, Blossom, I know you've already uh, spoken a little bit and you're connecting with Dominique to make sure vets are taken care of. Do you guys have any unmet needs or um, any resources that you can share with the group? Um, right now, there's no unmet needs that I know of. Oh, I can good. check in like I did last time to see if the VASH team, if they've, you know, lost anything as far as food and might need some replacement. And I can let you know that. And then as far as um, resources, you know, we're, we're directing persons just like the community would to FEMA, Red Cross, and we'll be able to get a field tomorrow when all of our programs are back and operational if we have what our GPD and HCHV beds look like so we can place some of those that are displaced in those programs if they're open to it. Excellent. Thank you so much, Blossom. I appreciate that update. Um, we have both uh, St. Vincent de Paul uh, North and South on the line. Um, can we get an update from St. Vinny's as well? Uh, we're, op we're operating functional now. Uh, um, Everything's back to normal. Uh, with the care, the uh, courtyard will be open tonight, um, and everything else. So we're we're back at it. That's pretty much all I have to say. I'm tired. My need is sleep. <laughs> Thank you for all that your team is doing, and it's good to know that the courtyard is back open. Um, that's great. And then uh, Chrissy, uh, did you have an update yes. as well? Yes, we just got power an hour ago. So. We served sandwiches out of to-go boxes today and said a prayer that we wouldn't have to continue with that. And um, so we'll be up and running full services tomorrow. That is fantastic. Good to hear that the St. Vincent de Paul Kitchen and Resource Center is ready to rock and roll tomorrow. And yes. thank you for making the best of not having um, all of your normal supplies and everything. We appreciate <laughs> that. Um, all right. Continuing on, um, let me see. We also have uh, Salvation Army St. Pete on the line, it looks like. Yes, we're here. All right. Could you give us an update? How are things going over there? Do you have any unmet needs? Uh, so no unmet needs. Uh, services are fully functional. We're up and running. And then later on the call, my team will kind of brief a little bit more on what our canteens are doing for the community. So we're up and running, but still concerned about the community. So still trying to help as much as possible. Um, we're still out of our St. Pete location. Um, we're still feeding individuals, um, not just community, also special needs, shelters. Um, so everything's good to go. So fully operational, just waiting for some staff who are still dealing with some difficulties to make it into work sometime this week. But other than that, everything else is pretty good to go. Awesome. Thank you so much, DeAndre and the Saint, and the Salvation Army team. Um, let me see. We have a uh, first contact. I'm going to get 211 out of my head. We got first contact on the line. Um, do we have an update from first contact? Um, yes. So as of Saturday, we resumed services. As I mentioned last week, 85, 90 90% 90 of our staff are without power, but now um, it's 70 so 70% of our staff are without power. So we're relying on volunteers from Northwest Florida to answer our calls and also um, New Jersey and Connecticut 211. They're assist assisting with the volume as well. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you to our counterparts out of state. It's really important to make sure those 211 services and 988 services are active. So thank you. Um, we have uh, Lieutenant H, if you're available uh, to talk about Safe Harbor. We are back up and running. Uh, everything is back to normal. We can as as normal as it is now. Uh, we did sixty seven intakes on Friday. Um, so Friday was insane, but we have no unmet needs, and we are we are back to full operating capacity. Thank you, and way to go. Um, that sounds like a busy day. So thank you very much. Um, it looks like we have Westcare on the line. Hi, Victoria. Uh, yeah, we are all back to normal also. We're doing a little minor repair work at our mustard seed facility. We've 
um, double our capacity over at, um, not double our capacity, but double our intakes over at Turning Point. Um, we are not bringing new intakes in today, but we will open up intakes uh, starting tomorrow morning. Sorry, I froze there for a second. <laughs> Thank you very much for that update, Steve. I really appreciate that. Um, is the HMIS team able to uh, give a quick update and remind everybody where to go for HMIS assistance? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. This is Imani Smith, manager of HMIS and system administration. I hope everyone is doing okay today. Um, and, and in light of uh, you know everything that's been happening. Um, so as far as HMIS, we are keeping an eye on the help desk if anyone has any questions um, or concerns. If anyone has any um, HMIS updates that they need, please don't hesitate to reach out. If you have any questions in regards to shelter check-ins, um, again, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, as I mentioned in the, the last storm meeting, um, we definitely, you know, want you all to to focus on your your clients and and making sure everyone is safe and and okay. Um, we're definitely, you know, able to assist with you know backdating and and assisting agencies with, with walking through that process once we're you know all back online. So if you do need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. I will put the link on how to submit a help desk ticket in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much, Imani. And then um, I know it was asked in another meeting, so I apologize for not saying it here before I asked Imani to give that update. HMIS, for anybody who's unfamiliar, is the Homeless Management Information System. It is the centralized database uh, that many of the folks on this call use. Um, do we have any other providers that want to give an update, perhaps from a resource center or from an outreach team? I have an update. Christine Long, Metropolitan Please go Metropolis. ahead. Absolutely. Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, so we have been uh, reaching out where we've been uh, called for some assistance. Currently, the next three days, we've got a team at, I'm trying to think of where it is. Let me look. Shore Acres. So yes, Shore Acres received a lot of damage the first storm and they're still struggling, of course, with the second storm. So for the next three days, uh, we've gonna be, we're gonna be offering food, uh, cleaning supplies, uh, lots of supports to the Shore Acres folks at Riviera United Methodist Church through, through that location. We also have several other meal site locations in Pinellas County that we are continuing to serve if they're able to. So food is going out to them, but we do have a challenge because we were stationed out of the TROP. So our culinary program and our meal site program is struggling with a home. Uh, it's gonna be quite a while I, if till we can get back into the TROP. So we are doing everything out of our Tampa campus and shipping it over to Pinellas County. But uh, if there's anybody who knows of a commercial kitchen that could maybe a good uh, opportunity resource for our culinary program and our meal site program to run out of temporarily. I'd love to get that information so that we could help with that. This is a Teresa Jones. Um, I would suggest reaching out to Pinellas Technical College, which is on 34th Street South in St. Petersburg. They have a, a culinary program themselves, but they definitely have a commercial kitchen. Wonderful. Thank you. I will do that. I was going to say the same thing, You're but welcome. there's also a location on Roosevelt Boulevard um, for PTAC that has a commercial kitchen for their culinary program. So it's kind of mid-county. Thank you. I'll reach out to them. Uh, Christine, Northwest. I'm not certain of what, what size uh, of kitchen you need, but many of the churches, I know my church, Mount Zion Progressive, has a commercial kitchen. I'm not certain what size kitchen you need. Also, uh, Child's Park uh, Recreation Center has a commercial kitchen as well, because at one point they were trying to start a, con a community culinary program there. So those are a couple of additional locations in South St. Petersburg. That's a Child's Park Recreation Center, which is a city facility, and Mount Zion Progressive Missionary Baptist Church. 
Okay, thank you. I wrote those down and I see uh, Trinity Presbyterian in the uh, chat also. So thank you guys very much. Now, uh, we're also helping with folks with some financial assistance. Uh, this is particularly people who need temporary hotels that are waiting for the FEMA approvals to pay for their hotel stays. We have been able to help some folks with that. So I will get some information to Victoria about how you can connect people up for that resource. So we're, we're helping as many folks as we can, focusing primarily on the South St. Pete and uh, Clearwater areas where our Neighbor Hope teams are. Thank you so much, um, both for that update and everybody for those resources. Um, I, that's exactly what I love to see. Uh, and thank you for sharing. Um, and thank you, Christine, for all that your team is doing. Any other outreach teams, resource centers that would like to share? Not seeing anybody come off mute right now. I do want to remind everybody that the feeding task force um, is meeting daily at 2.30 on Teams. I have just put the information for that meeting in the chat. Um, the Pinellas Vode um, Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster are also holding daily calls at 4 o'clock. I am pulling up that information and I will put it in the chat just as soon as I can. Um, and if you want to join those meetings, please feel free to join with the information I provided or uh, reach out to me via email. Um, I think it's really valuable to know what's going on in our community and it's a great way to share resources. Um, and then of course, our team will continue to share resources via email. We are working on a guidebook for storm resources as well, um, kind of a living document. So we will share that um, in its current form, at least in uh, today's email. If your organization has resources that you would like to share, that you would like listed there, um, volunteer needs that you would like us to share with the community, please make sure that you send those to us so that we can get them out. And then I also wanna make everybody aware of a couple of places that you can access resources as nonprofit providers. Operation Barbecue, I put this in the chat earlier, Operation Barbecue is able to do bulk meal orders. If you need 50 hot meals, Operation Barbecue is ready to assist as they are able. You just have to reach out. And I did put that in the chat, but I can go ahead and put it back in there again. Um, make sure that you reach out to them if you need it. And then of course, also the Church World Services, they are available to assist with things like um, cleanup kits, uh, blankets. If you need any of those items, please reach out to them as well. I put that in the chat too, and I will just go ahead and flag those for everybody once more in the chat. And we did, of course, include that in the provider email as well. Um, with all of that in mind, does anybody have any other resources, concerns, needs that you would like to share? Victoria, this is uh, Teresa Jones again. Yes. I'm sorry that I'm not able to connect with Wi-Fi or internet in my house because it's not back yet. So what I'm going to repeat, please, whatever you're putting in the chat. Remember, some of us are on phone, so we can't see the chat. And then secondly, I wanted to alert everyone. I just got an alert that all the Tampa Bay area schools are closed again tomorrow. Thank you very much, Teresa. And yes, we will ensure that all of these resources are shared in the provider email that goes out today. Um, the resources that I have just shared in the chat were also um, included in um, the last provider email that went out um, for Church World Services and Operation Barbecue. So you'll get those information. You'll get that information again today. Um, again, if you're in the city of Gulfport, there is still a boil water notice. Um, and if you need anything, please let us know. Other than that. Um, was there anything else from the Victor county? Victoria. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Teresa. V Victoria. Yeah. I, I, I know the city of St. Petersburg lifted their boil water alert. Yes. And I, and it did. Uh, are you sure it did not include Gulfport? The city of St. Pete's website says Gulfport is still under, in, under a boil water notice, but everywhere else okay. it's lifted. All right. Thank you and for that's checking. From this morning. <laughs> it is yeah, the most recent update I've seen. Okay, yeah. thank you. 
of course, absolutely. Um, do we have any other questions, concerns, anything to share? Uh, yes, Victoria, this is Bob Lowry. Um, where is the VOAD contact information? Is that the information that says dial in by phone? <laughs> that would be for the um, feeding task force for the VOAD. I apologize, y'all. My computer, uh, my outlook has been freezing up on me a lot lately. Um, like I said, connectivity has been really kind of tough. <laughs> um, I will pull that VOAD information. I have also included this in the pr uh, previous provider email. So if you get those um, emails, that information is included there as well. Um, but I'm going to pull it right now. The VOAD, they meet at four o'clock every day. Um, I have it right here. They are also meeting on Teams. And let's see, VOAD is in the chat right now. Um, and of course, those will be shared via email as well. Um, and then if you have any questions, if you need any other resources or you would like connected to any other folks, uh, please let me know. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns, needs, or resources to share? All right, don't be a stranger. If you do have resources or needs come up, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, that's what the COC is all about, making sure that we are able to share and uh, work collaboratively. Um, so uh, all of that being said, um, anything else from the county? No, all right, I'm gonna no, go ahead. Oh, oh, and nothing here, thanks everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Dominique, again for, for all your help. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, thank you all for being here. Um, if you need anything, reach out. And we will uh, not be hosting this meeting tomorrow, but we will continue to send out resources. So thank you all. Excellent job providing. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye.